The Cenozoic period that followed after the extinction of the non-avian dinosaurs is often called the time of the mammals, but I've argued many times here that that might not be a completely fair term. Sure, we have the highest diversity of megafauna that kickstarted during the Paleogene, but it almost makes it sound like we took over straight away with no problem and other animals like reptiles never even stood a chance. Carbonemis, though, is a great example of how this is far from the case. This animal is actually one of the more recent discoveries, having been published back in 2012. Edwin Cadena et al. discovered some turtle remains back in 2005 in a North Colombian mine, of which the formation known here is the Acerion Formation. Now if that formation sounds familiar to you at all, then it's probably because I mentioned it here, meaning that this turtle lived alongside the gigantic Titanoboa. This particular deposit was a lake deposit, showcasing a freshwater environment, and it wasn't long before Cadena realised that this was the biggest turtle since the Cretaceous which are pretty hard numbers to beat. Carbonemis cofferini, meaning cold freshwater turtle, was a member of the Podog nemedids, an extant family of side-neck turtles with eight surviving species left, but this beast far outweighed those guys though. The carapace or shell alone measured in at around 1.72 by 1.8 meters, or five foot eight by 5.11, and probably weighed around a ton or more. Now, despite being a turtle, this isn't actually the kind of body plan that we'd normally see with marine turtles, namely in the legs. Carbonemis was only a semi-aquatic animal, being likely a competent swimmer, but with legs that could support it on land well enough to walk, albeit a little clumsily, much like today's side neck turtles. As a type of giant side neck turtle, this also means that Carbonemis had a very long neck that it could retract into its shell by forming a tight S-curve with its neck. One more thing really interested paleontologists along with the size though, and that was the jaws. Carbonemis had excessively massive and powerful jaws. Now like most turtles, this was an omnivore, balancing vegetation with munching away on various mollusks and smaller vertebrates. Here's the thing though, when you're this big, smaller vertebrates encompasses a lot. With this in mind, Carbonemis likely hunted various lizards, crocs, and maybe some small mammals. And had a human come across it in life, well, I'd keep my distance. Now as a turtle from the mid to late Paleocene of Colombia, Carbonemi's environment wouldn't have looked too dissimilar from today's rainforests. This was a coastal floodplain biome covered in tropical rainforests of which reptiles were the dominant fauna. A range of crocodilomorphs lived here such as Acherontosuchus, Anthracosuchus and Serionosuchus, as well as smaller turtles like Serionemis, and Carbonemi's main competitor for the big boy of the region, Titanoboa, the largest snake to ever exist. Now both Titanoboa and Carbonemi's are shining examples of greenhouse gigantism in reptiles, especially during the Paleocene when the world was still under the heavy effects of the greenhouse climate. And if you're wondering why this affects size, I do also have a video going into that here. Not only this, but Carbonemis was subject to a trend that had been continuing since the early Cretaceous for turtles, which meant they were gradually getting bigger right up until the late Eocene. But let's not forget that the temperature during this time was not getting warmer in line with the increasing size, so we don't actually know for certain what made Carbonemis such a huge predatory turtle. If you do have ideas though, I'd love to hear them. Let me know what you think of Carbonemis, as well as why you think this is the biggest semi-aquatic turtle that we know of. Also don't forget that you can gain early access to videos just like this, as well as loads of other benefits by following the Patreon link in the description. Catch you guys next time.